Hello everybody, it's Bob again and I'm going to be cooking spaghetti sauce today with uh, elk meatballs and, um, and uh, pork loin from uh, wild boar. And um, this is going to be a special sauce with no acid in it, or very minimal amount of acid. That's why I'm making it because a lot of people don't know um, uh, that you can get the acid out. And, and when I do it, I'll, I'll show you. And the, the big deal is that... Uh, Excuse me. The big deal is uh, it's just baking soda, really. So um, it it counters the acid, and uh, the the idea is don't put too much in because then you'll take the the tomato flavor away. So it's uh, you'll see it's it's close to a half of a teaspoon to a teaspoon. It all matters how big your sauce is. Today I'll probably do just a heavy half of a teaspoon, and that should do it. And you'll see the reaction uh, when I put the so put it in the sauce. So uh, let me show you my ingredients today. Um, here's my pork loin that I, uh, my wild boar loin that I didn't chop up yet. Here's the meatballs. I have to round them up. Excuse the bandage. I had a little operation on my wrist this uh, about five, six days ago. Um, and then uh, we got onions and uh, green peppers and red peppers all chopped up. They'll, they'll pretty much cook down. And then here's garlic. Uh, this is garlic looks different because we freeze our garlic and we also put our garlic inside uh, olive oil and, it, and we fill the jar up with garlic. See, I'm getting ready to put a, another bunch of garlic in here. Because we make so much garlic, we freeze it and then we take it out as we need it. Even though it changes color, it will still, when you start cooking it, it, still, it kind of goes right back to white, you know, whitish. So... Um, We've been doing this for years, and it and it makes some delicious uh, tasting olive oil. So we fill it, and then put the olive oil over it, and uh, that's it. And uh, now I will put some of this olive oil in, along with the butter, and then I'll start the onions. And um, so let me get these all rolled up nice and neat, and get these chopped up. I'll put some seasoning. I'm going to put salt in it. I'm, I'm going to pre-salt the. These tomatoes here, these are uh, diced tomatoes uh, for a little body and uh, also tomato sauce. And then here's a beautiful sauce my wife makes, she cans. I just didn't want to use all the cans, uh, you know, too many, too much canned sauce up. So what I do is I spread, I spre I'm spread. i spreading it out. So I'm going to make a bigger sauce with a lot of meat and stuff. But I didn't want to use three jars of this. So I just use one jar of this for flavor and, and this, I'll season this accordingly. Um, all right, get back to you when I start uh, the caramelizing and, and um, you know, doing the meatballs and whatnot. All right. Bye. All right, so here, all right, so here's our meatballs all rounded up. Our pork line is ready to go. We got our butter and uh, oil and whatnot. I'm going to season this um, tomatoes prior to doing it. I saw a gentleman on the internet do this, and it worked. It it. it it looked like it works really good. You put, put a bunch of salt in, in each one and, uh, and pepper. So just gonna do that like that and do that like that. And I hope I don't goof up my wrist so much. And I should have pre-ground this. I, I usually like it pre-ground the pepper because it's you know, a nuisance to do this. Or I use my hand, it swells up a little bit. There, that's enough of that. And uh, I'll just put in some some all natural sea salt, just a little in my hand in each one. See, probably about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, and then half a teaspoon there, and then that's that. And, uh, I'll add, I'll add some more later, probably season it to taste, you know, and uh, so now we're going to start, I'm going to take the meatballs, put them in uh, olive oil and some garlic oil. So we got some olive here and uh, some garlic oil. going to get better at this video <laughs> there we go some nice garlic oil and that is well it tastes you can taste the, uh, the garlic right in it really nice 
And uh, that's that. We'll get that heating up. And uh, okay. So here we go. We're gonna start putting the meatballs in there. Get them rounded up best I can. And what I'm gonna do is just brown these and then put them in about an hour and a half before I uh, finish the sauce. The sauce is gonna be a fast sauce today. It's not gonna be one of those cook all for a long time, period of time. Um, it's not really necessary. I'll lower this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe I can get these. I didn't know if I was gonna have enough room to do all this. Get these seasoned, cooked up. Actually, I would like to cook those faster, the pork faster, than the meatballs. Oh, oh. to use this paste this kind of tomato paste um, rather than the canned tomato paste and I so you know it's all your preference this is not not really a directions type thing this is like do what your heart tells you to do <laughs> I know it will come out good all right that's nice and slow it's very easy to cook them too fast so all right I'll get back to you as I'm as they start to move along Okay, now the meatballs are all done. I'm gonna get the sear in this, these loins. I don't wanna cook them for very long. I just want them to be seared. Because, you know, loins are very tender, so. I'm really using the loins so I can have some nice pork fat cooked into the spaghetti sauce. There we go. So now, all our meatballs and all the pork lines are all set to go. We got the pan getting warm. I, I throw in about a half a stick of butter. And uh, then I probably put in about uh, almost close to that in, um, in olive oil. Not quite, but you'll see. There we go. It's a nice caramelization mix, you know. And what it really acts as, what I think works good is the, the butter in there uh, helps the sauce really hold to the pasta. You know, this is uh, why it's a good deal. Caramelizing them onions in a moment. And uh, even though it looks like a lot of onions and peppers, it really kind of 
pretty much disintegrates as, as you cook it, you know. And this sauce is going to cook for approximately probably two hours, and then the meat's going to cook for about 45 minutes in, in it. So, uh, because it doesn't take that long, 45 minutes to an hour. This way you don't overcook the loins. And uh, the sauce, two hours of sauce is okay, from what I hear from, from the real Italian people that I watch on the internet. There, that's enough butter. I'm not going to take that. So, now, I'm going to put my peppers in first because they seem to caramelize, take a little bit longer to caramelize. So here we go. So we'll give that a, a shot and we'll let those caramelize for a little while. And then I'll put the peppers in afterwards. I mean, I'm sorry, the onions and garlic in next. So, yeah. And when my wife makes the, the sauce in the jar uh, that we're going to put in, when she makes it like when we get our tomato crop, uh, she um, puts peppers in it also, at least some of the sauces that she makes. So, and that almost, you can barely tell they're in there. So. There we go. All right, I'll get back to you when I get the onions and I'll put in the, uh, again, uh, the, the great thing about this sauce is it's not going to give you any hard time uh, with your with uh, acid reflux or anything like that just because of the baking soda. And you'll see that my buddy Danny didn't even want to eat any tomato sauce that I made. I, you know, he's, he was over. But he says, I'll try it. And he, he loved it. He says, because he's so sensitive to it, it, it's like it gave him a whole new outlook on life with, with the tomatoes, you know? Uh, being able to enjoy spaghetti sauce. A lot of people have to put it away. Have to say, oh no, that's not for me. It gives me such a hard time. And all it is is a simple thing of a half a teaspoon or less of, of baking soda and you can have what you enjoy, you know? That's pretty neat. So I'm gonna put a little bit of Italian seasoning in there. There, just there. We'll let that cook in there. And uh, let that caramelize nice. Yeah, the butter I believe is a nice binder. It just helps that sauce just hold right to the pasta real nice. Oh, and also the peppers are great for sweetening up a sauce. You know, the, uh, the bell peppers. I, I think I didn't mention what kind of peppers they were, but they're bell peppers. Okay. Okay, so I caramelized the, you can start to, you can see the, that the peppers are starting to change colors a little bit. So I'm gonna add the, it's only been cooking for like three, four minutes or so, maybe five at the most. I'm gonna add the onions in, and my wife straightened me out about something that with the tomatoes that I, I neglected to say is that I'm I'm just mimicking another recipe that I, I from a nice guy in in, uh, in uh, on the internet uh, from Boston, I believe he's doing. And uh, what with the salt and the tomatoes, when he did the, when he did his recipe, he does them with canned crushed tomatoes. Today I didn't have, uh, I mean uh, canned peeled tomatoes and uh, he puts he seasons them with the salt today I used partially seasoned uh, uh, tomatoes and it's a tomato sauce it's not uh, a tomato uh, canned tomatoes so uh, I don't think I put too much salt in there by any means but just so heads up it, it's that uh, they are a little bit uh, salted already the canned uh, the tomato sauce so maybe it'll be a little salty but I doubt it just so, just a heads up. So uh, that's the way you would do it if it was just plain tomatoes. And the diced tomatoes, I don't think they're 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 salted. I just think that they're just diced. They're not pre-seasoned and they're organic. So hopefully that'll that'll help you. And uh, I'll get back. Okay, so now the the they're pretty much caramelized. I put in all this nice paste in there. And get it all mixed in in the paste. There we go. 
face is a little pricey. I think it was like five dollars, but eh, what's five dollars when you're making something so nice? Here we go. Pretty much all out of there. Now, swish that paste in, get it all nice and mixed up in there. Cook, cook it all in. And you know what, I'm even gonna throw that piece of butter that I took out back in. There we go. There. All right. So I have all the meat ready to go in. I'm letting it cool down and I'll cover it with uh, with aluminum foil and the juices that are in this, that come out of this meat will make that sauce look, taste so delicious. And I guess we're ready to put all the tomatoes in. Uh, we got uh, diced tomatoes, fine ripened. Uh, there we go. That would be just like putting in whole tomatoes that you crushed up, pretty much. There we go. I'll mix that up a little, mix it in, crush it up a little bit more maybe. All right. Wife's lovely sauce cooked out of the garden. I mean, made made from the garden. If I can get it open, come on, buddy. There we go. All right, here's your sauce from the garden. Quart, nice quart. Even I put a little water in there to wash it out. Yeah, there we go. Stir that up a little bit. Get it mixed in there. Now if I left it just that size, that meat that I put in there would be way, way overpowering. So that's why I want the extra. This is normally what I would, a little bit bigger maybe with just meatballs. I might make it a little bit bigger. But because I'm putting so much meat in, I'm giving my buddy Danny some for him and his wife uh, to have a nice spaghetti dinner and we'll have some and I get, my son might show up. So we'll, we'll make good use of it. So here's uh here's my hunts tomato sauce. There. And here's some more hunts. And that's gonna do it pretty much. I'm gonna just wash the cans. Wash the sauce out of the cans. A little bit. There we go. All right, counter's not so dirty anymore. Oh, by the way, my wife was very nice about helping me clean the kitchen so it didn't look like a mess in our last video. She wasn't happy with me. <laughs> there we go. 
Now, it's 140, so at 240, I'll put the meat in. No, 340, I'll put the meat in. This will cook slow for two hours. I'll stir it occasionally. Maybe my wife and I will go watch Castle while it's cooking. All right. All right, so I just put in a little bit more Italian seasoning. I tasted it. I tend to try to stir it once every 15 minutes. You don't want it to stick to the bottom. You burn it to the bottom and it'll ruin the whole sauce. The gentleman that I watched on the internet and his sauce, he says, if you do burn it, he says, just take the sauce out, don't scrape the bottom, and then put it a clean, you know, get the sauce in another container, clean the bottom, and start again. If you mix that burned sauce into this sauce, you're going to ruin it. So I'm just kind of telling you what he, what I learned from him. Fine gentleman. He's a real good cook out of Boston. And uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stir in some nice Parmesan cheese. Everything tastes good with Parmesan. There. I'm going to put that in there, and that's going to cook in. You know, that's all preference. I, I, I... I just like Parmesan in there, the flavor of it. You can do with it or without it, you know. There. Now, the moment of truth. I'm going to talk about the baking soda and the importance of it. Years ago, there's, uh, we used to have older batteries. They would, they would sweat and acid would form on the posts of the batteries in the cars. And the way you clean the posts was putting a, a water soluble, you know, water and, and baking soda put on the post. It would just dissolve the the, uh, the acid that had leached out of the battery. And then it, you wash it off and it cleaned the battery. That's it, you were, you were done. Well, the same thing happens with the acid in the tomatoes. And what I notice is it's, you got a nice bite to the tomato sauce right now. And it's, it tastes very good, but there's a bite to it and that's, uh, you want some bite to your tomato, but you don't want to put so much baking soda that you take the whole thing away because then you will make your sauce bland. So this is a thing better a little less than a little bit more. You could get the feel of it uh, for it as you as you move along do, using it through, through time. So I'm gonna, I should have got, should have got a spoon out sooner. I'm gonna get like a that's probably a little over a half, half a teaspoon. And watch what happens. Watch how the, the sauce starts to sizzle. It, it just cuts it. When you stir it around, it'll start to, uh, oops. It'll start to fizzle when it gets mixed up in there. You'll see it. See it fizzling? That's eating the acid out of the tomatoes. And see, it doesn't take much. It goes a long ways. So I would prefer that I don't uh, put too much. Because the first time I tried it, I did make the sauce a little bland. I mean, it was still good, but I noticed that it was, I, I would prefer it to have a little bite. And when I did it for my buddy Danny, it was very sensitive. The second time I did the sauce, we were good. He, he loved it and I, I liked it. I could still taste the tomato bite, you know, the, the, the niceness of the sauce. But see how it's bubbling? It's just it's just destroying the acids in there. It's just neutralizing the acids. I I've I've watched a lot of videos on cooking on on YouTube, and there's only one guy, the gentleman in Boston, that that showed this trick. He his grandmother showed him, and a lot of people do things like put sugar in it they, to get rid of the acid. They put carrots in it and whatnot. This is such a simple thing, uh, and it's. And it just does the job, you know. There, still got a nice tomatoey bite, but I know that that just by looking at all that neutralization of, of the acid, that most of it's gone, and it shouldn't bother you. It, it shouldn't bother me or my buddy. He's going to be the monitor of how much I use as I give him this, as he tries my sauce and, and he keeps liking it. Then I'll know how much I, I should put in. If this sauce doesn't bother him, then I'm gonna know that's the right amount for this. I think I'm a little light, but 
I'd rather be a little light than a, than a little heavy and make it bland because what good is that? Bland. Okay, so now it's been cooking for a while. Now it's time to put our meatballs and our in our tenderloins in, in our loins from our uh, wild boar. There we go. And the meatballs are from elk, just in case I forgot to mention that before. There we go. These will cook about 45 minutes, maximum an hour. And, and uh, that should do it. And uh, Mrs. Mrs. J, Janine and I will have a delicious dinner. There we go. I'll stir those in. There we go. And see, you don't even see any peppers. There was a lot of peppers in there, and you don't even see the peppers in the sauce. There we go. I'll get our meatballs in. There. In about an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, the sauce will be ready. And then We'll have our nice early dinner, Saturday afternoon dinner. Maybe my son and the grandchild and the wife is coming over. I'm not sure. They're in another town. They might make it. We'll see. Here we go. And this, all that beautiful juice from all that meat. I don't waste any. Here we go. So, the gentleman that I learned... Um, how to make these beautiful meatballs from was Godfather Barbecue in Italian. Uh, he, my wife has tried to make meatballs for a long time and until we found his recipe, these things come out beautiful. And, uh, and then the gentleman, um, the other gentleman that uh, taught me the, the baking soda thing in the sauce, a lot about the sauce and the way he does it and how he seasons his cans of sauce and what he uses and whatnot. He's very particular and you can see why. I mean, he's a great chef. Uh, his his uh, site is Live, Laugh, and Cook Italian. And he's the gentleman that I learned the baking soda secret from, as I just said. Okay, we'll get back to you and we can make a nice, beautiful ending picture of a great pasta dinner. All right, thank you. Well, here's the finishing touches of our sauce. It's almost done. It has another about 10, 15 minutes to go. And then we're gonna have one beautiful Saturday afternoon dinner, my wife and I. The pasta's cooking. Get done with the, we'll show you the finished product. Here we go, dinner's just about ready. Pasta's all set. A little bit of sauce in the bottom. There we go. Uh oh, that didn't work so good. <laughs> this is the first time I use this type of strainer, so. There we go. This should strain it just right. That didn't work so good. There we go. A little on the sloppy side. Usually I do it in a, in a regular strainer in the sink, but tonight, today I had to do, play guinea pig. See what happens. There we go. My wife is better at this than I am. There we go. And that should be a little bit left. Italian boss of mine taught an Italian boss of mine taught me never rinse the pasta, he says. Just stir it and it's good enough. And that's ever since then I never never rinse the pasta. There we go. It's been quite a while too. All right, so there we go. The pasta's all set to go. 
a little bit more sauce in the pasta. There. Mix it around a little bit. I hope my son shows up <laughs> later. We can give him, give him some of this. Or we'll just have leftovers. Whatever it was. Here, and then we'll just mix that up a little bit. There. Beautiful. All right, so now I'm gonna put the meat part of the sauce. I guess I can shut my sauce off. The sauce caught, cooked for exactly two hours. There we go. To me, I think that's just fine. And here goes a good, oh no, I almost broke my meatball up. There. Leave the rest there. And uh, here we go. I set a table for my, my wife and I. Here we go. Here's our meatball sauce and pork and our pasta. And uh, I want to thank you all for watching and it's time to eat. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.